That is a hot greenhouse. These little baby cucamelons don't seem to mind. I kept direct selling my cucamelons and some little creepy crawly keeps eating them down to the dirt every single time they come up. So I decided to start them in the greenhouse where they could get a little more established and then I'll move them out into the garden. Same thing with these peppers. I'm just waiting for them to get a little bit more established before I move them out. They don't have just a whole lot longer to go, but as long as they're doing fine in here, I'm okay leaving them. Look at my pretty fish peppers getting showy. I like that. Just a quick glance at the garden. It's looking beautiful. Nice and full. Look at those noodle beans climbing their way up. And I think these sunflowers are literally just like growing an inch every day. Benjamin and I were down here earlier today just working in the garden planting a few things. Some dahlia bulbs that I got or tubers I guess is what they are but um and just some seeds earlier before it got really hot today and I have found myself over the last few months just so eagerly awaiting garden season and it's really easy for me right now to find myself eagerly awaiting like that part of the year where the garden is just explosively gorgeous super productive, full, trellises covered, you know, just like the fullness of it. And today, as I was kind of wishing, I was looking at the, the tomatoes behind me here, wishing that they were up a little higher and setting a little more fruit, and I was finally like, stop. This is such a short window, just enjoy it for what it is. So today I've been trying to make an intentional choice to just enjoy the season for what it is exactly what it is. Little tomato plants barely tickling the bottom of the trellis. Little sunflowers growing so much every day because I know it's gonna change just so, so much. Definitely trying to make that choice. It's still a little hard. I still really wanna eat a tomato. I got my little bistro set that I built yesterday set up here in the garden. I put it here at the end of this row because actually in the morning uh, until about 11 o'clock, Everywhere else in the garden is in sun, except for this little corner right here at the beginning. Uh, even the pavilion at that point, the sun's coming down from this way, so it's a really sunny, bright place to sit, even once that's done. So this is where I usually set up my chair and I uh, have my morning coffee. And I came down here this morning with Sweet Maya, had some quiet time down here. It was really nice. Look at the hennies over here dust bathing. They're so fun to watch. Got 11 of them in there. It's not a bad haul. Some of these were probably from last night too because I didn't get them this morning. So that's still pretty good though. I'll take it. Set this here so I don't drop it and mess it up. Hey guys. What's up dudes? Hey JP. Hey girl. Hey Christopher walking. What's up dude? Gerard is still behind me in his pen with this Premier One electric fence going around it to keep him from getting out here. Namely because he has been eyeing Journey Pigs goodies and we don't need any of that of Everett's Refuge Farm. However, we did let Fanny and Clementine, our two little girly mangalitsas, we let them out to have free range of this backyard. One, because the grass is getting kind of high and we typically just let our animals graze the grass down. But two, we will be putting them in with Gerard here within the next couple of weeks. Uh, they are 10 months old and I just wanted to give them as much space as I could because they start growing really fast when they have more access to food. And giving them this field will actually allow them to grow more in the next couple weeks. They are old enough to be exposed to the boar. They're old enough to be bred. I'm probably just being a helicopter mom about it. Um, they're 10 months old, which is plenty old enough, but I would just like to give them a little more space and time to grow as much as possible 
before I send them off on their first date with old Jer. Journey is seriously living her best pig life right now. She's so fat. Oh, did you hear me talking about you? Hey, lady. <laughs> hey, girls. Hey, girls. We've gotten a lot of questions about Fanny, Clem, and Gerard. Uh, the last few times that I've showed them, a lot of people going, what, I've never seen curly pigs before? They're a breed called Mangalitsas, and yes, they do have curly hair. They are very distinguished by that journey. My goodness. Is it too hot for you? Do you need a pool? Do you need a mud hole? Journey is acting like she is so over this heat, and it's not even June yet. Honey, dramatic much. So back to the Mangalitsas, if someone will let me talk about them without interrupting. Uh, yes, they have curly hair. This is a breed characteristic. It does feel like pig hair. You can't harvest it and use it like sheep hair. But they are really beautiful. They're a lard pig. We have our three to breed them and uh, we really like them very much. I actually learned about Mangalitsas a few years ago, I had seen them and read an article about them. thought they were really fascinating. However, about maybe a year and a half ago or so, I'm not exactly sure, I became friends with um, a woman named Kaylee on Instagram. And she breeds Mangalitsa. She has a YouTube channel now called The Honeystead. And she, Jeremiah calls her Mangalitsa Mama. Uh, because she was really the one that like sealed the deal for me that this was the breed of pig that I wanted to get into. So I'll put a link to her channel down below. She's a beautiful person and has a really awesome YouTube channel. So I think you guys really like her. And honestly, she could tell you way more about Mangalitsas than I can. We actually just got our breeding trio in November. So we've only had them for six months. Uh, they were they were obviously they were little when we got them and we've been raising them up in order to breed them so we're pretty new into the pig keeping thing so these little dudes are not happy right now because i have moved them away from their moms which they are plenty old enough for so don't believe them they're just upset that their life has now changed um change is hard when you're a goat also when you're a person too sometimes i think but uh they're just having a hard time because we just moved them away from their mom today. But they're almost five months old. The moms have been weaning them. And at this point, I kind of realized that I had waited too long to get them out of the female yard uh, whenever I saw one of them trying to mount one of the ladies. So hopefully we didn't end up with any accidental breeding in that. I was really, as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, I started counting my fingers how long it has been since they were born. And I was like, it is definitely time to get them out of that yard. I should add that the ladies were not having it. So I feel very, very doubtful that either one of those little bucklings was successful. Uh, usually a doling has to give at least somewhat uh, consent to, for a buck to be successful. And they were getting all kinds of knocked off by the ladies, however, it was definitely time for them to move into the boy yard. So today was really, really warm, but we've got some cloudy, cooler days coming up. And I think the kids and I are gonna come out with my little uh, dump wagon and pick up all the rocks in this yard that the pigs unearthed. Well done, Fanny girl. Well done, thank you for your help, you little gardening pig. And then we're actually going to be taking those big piles of compost from the last like year of cleaning out the goat barn that's been sitting there breaking down and we're going to spread it out over the top of this area to get it ready for planting. You're supposed to wait 60 days after having pigs on a piece of ground to plant in it because the manure can be too hot for the plants before that time is up. However, pigs are relatively clean animals and they have been pretty much going in one little area of this. And so we didn't leave enough time to wait 60 days and plant this this year. While I would not take this risk on anything like root crops or lettuces or anything we're gonna be eating directly out of this ground, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that because that could be dangerous. We could be worried about um, like contamination at that point. 
I actually have decided we are gonna scrape off the poopy area, lay down the aged compost, and I am gonna go ahead and plant some melons and squash in this with the expectation that this ground may be too hot for them. I'm gonna till it a little bit, uh, kind of just breaking up some of the areas that have been able to get hard, and I'm just gonna see what happens. For me, I'm not planning on putting a whole lot of investment in this space. I have plenty of seeds, and so I'm just gonna put them in and see what happens. If they don't do well, they don't do well, and I'm not out much of anything. And at the very least, this ground will be ready for uh, some fall crops, and it will definitely be ready to grow some great stuff in next year. Y'all, Jeremiah is seriously like a child with this tractor. It's honestly really, really cute. <laughs> He's so excited about it. Like he hasn't been eating his dinner when it was fresh at all this week. He's been waiting and then reheating it later, and then, I mean, staying out here until dark, waking up first thing in the morning, hopping up and coming out here. It's so funny. He is like a little kid uh, on this tractor, but it's looking really good. We're so excited to actually get to use the fullness of our property for the first time ever. And one thing I think is really cool is that our big, beautiful trees, we have some beautiful trees on this property, very old, big, beautiful oaks. And like, we can see them now because all the brush trees that were underneath are cleared out. Uh, it's really, really neat. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Gabe. Hey. Gabe is doing a good job and getting a lot bigger. He's still a little guy, but uh, the other day there was something out here. I don't know what it was, maybe a possum or a raccoon. And um, Gabe was barking and he actually when he started barking all the girls got behind him and I was like oh that is so sweet of course they're right here by our bedroom by our house um, we've never had an issue with a coyote or anything actually threatening getting this far up and close to our property but eventually when we get all of these woods cleared we're gonna have our goats and our new animals back out and around further back and so that's why we wanted to have a guardian dog for when we actually need one and it's nice to see that he's showing a little promise that he uh, is going to be eager to do that job <coughs> don't bite my butt lady silly charity Goodness. everybody's looking really good all looking happy currently we are milking mayhem once a day and miriam twice a day and i'm gonna keep an eye on maggie and nestle because even though they've been weaning their kids off we haven't been milking them but we may need to because their udders may fill up uh, with their kids being off we could be milking them more like maggie and nestle we could have been milking them this whole time However, since we don't have the bottle babies anymore and it's just us, milking our two best milkers has us in plenty of milk to do what we need to do with, with it. So we have not been milking all the goats because we just, we simply didn't need that much. Look at Mayhem's boys, they're getting so big. There's the other one back there. Maya and I were talking yesterday about kind of just upcoming content on our channel and obviously we have a lot going on. Projects are never our issue. We always have plenty of, of projects to show. But we've got garden tours back on and on a weekly basis. I love showing you guys garden tours. It's the coolest thing in the world to me that I get to share um, my garden with so many other enthusiasts and people who think that it's a worthwhile work. I just, I don't know how to express to you how valuable it is to me to get to share those things with you. Because for a long time, I did that without an audience and without people who really got it. And now I get the joy of, of all your encouragement. But we were actually talking about some other things we wanted to be intentional about doing more of. One of the things that I hear you saying that you want to see more of is devotionals. And that is definitely my heart to share those as you know as long as I feel like I have something to say uh, the reason why I haven't put one up in the last couple of months is no other reason than we have been very very busy and obviously it's a lot easier to just grab the camera and run around the farm and shoot a vlog showing you what we're doing 
rather than taking the intentional time to really sit down and um, and film something like that and then edit it. So it, I'm, I'm, I hear you. Um, that's something that is important to me too. Another thing that we really want to start doing on a regular basis, I don't know if we'll do them weekly like the garden tours, but I want to take you on our farm walks where a lot of times Maya and I will just walk the farm and we will go and check on all the animals, take a look at everything, and that's when we talk about a lot of our ideas and the things that we like and the things that we don't like and the things that we wish were different. Uh, that is a really special thing for me. And in the past, we don't take the camera with us. And to be honest, there will still be a lot of those farm walks that we don't take the camera with us because they're, they're kind of like my favorite date. But, you guys have asked, you know, like, oh, we want to see more of the horses. Where are the quail? Really kind of the animals that aren't right here, that aren't easy to just grab the camera and run to. Um, and so I was thinking maybe a weekly update, just walking around and taking a look at everything would be something that would be really beneficial for us to show you. If uh, joining us on the occasional farm walk is something that you would really enjoy to see, if that's content you would like, please let us know. Um, and if there's anything else that you're saying, hey, we want this. Um, I've, I told you we're going to be sharing more about what we do with our food, kind of giving you some farm to fork ideas. And of course, we'll still be here regularly with our big vibrant family, um, just kind of opening the window to our lives to you. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time. <laughs>